How's it going guys? Hobby from Warsaw a Thousand. And today we're gonna forecast the winter season for the United States. So let's get right into it by talking about the current forecast model probability of the um, of the National Weather Service as of right now. So um, as of right now, obviously we are under a La Nina phase um, at this point. Um, and you could see based off of this graph, so this is as of this as of July. However, I would guarantee you that this the temperature anomaly um, is a little higher in August based off of the amount of hurricanes and tropical cyclones we're seeing. So right now we're pretty much almost at a La Nina phase. I shouldn't say we're at not La Nina phase yet because we need three months of temperatures at least above one um one degree celsius for it to be considered a la nina but we're definitely entering that phase going into the fall season and what does that mean for the future so as of right now what this means is that when we're in a la nina it not only means we're gonna have an active hurricane season but we're more likely to see a more active winter season in certain areas of the united states however as of right now, the National, the National Weather Service isn't forecasting the La Nina to last because there comes a point where the there comes a point where uh, La Nina happens for where a uh, temperature anomaly that cold happens for a long duration. That there comes a point where it could only go down, and that's what the National Weather Service is forecasting at this point as the chances of a uh, neutral season increase drastically over the next couple months. However, when we begin winter, I would say in November, December, you see that the chance between La Nina and neutral is equal and that's definitely something to keep in mind when forecast, making the forecast of this and what and you might be asking what does a uh, neutral a more neutral season mean. So let me show you the map of what this means. So during a neutral season, we're more likely to see the cold air drop down into the northeast United States and the Great Lakes region and we're more likely to see a drop in temperatures throughout the northern portion of the United States and during a neutral season we're also more likely to see that subtropical jet move through the southeast which will bring more wet conditions in the southeast and also more warm conditions as a result of that subtropical jet because in the winter it's different from the summer because when you're under precipitation in the summer, it's usually colder and that's because the and that's obviously because the clouds are preventing the shortwave radiation from the sun from hitting the ground on the earth and when and during the summer the earth is a lot closer to the sun. So well not the earth, but the northern hemisphere is slightly closer to the sun, meaning that more shortwave radiation would hit the earth during the summer. However, during the winter, um what warms up the what warms up your location is a low pressure system because with low pressure systems or more like um, there are air molecules circulating around low pressure system and as those air molecules encounter each other they move around more which which causes work and as a result the temperature rises within these low pressure systems which warms up the temperatures during the winter because in the winter the shortwave radiation doesn't do much to warm up temperatures so the so a low pressure is needed to warm up temperatures throughout the southeast and that's expected because subtropical jet during the and during a, a enzo neutral winter pattern is expect um is um typical throughout the southeast and we see those warm temperatures extend even further out to the west and it is common because usually it isn't really cooler in along the west coast unless it's a uh, el nino phase and so it's expected that this will be warmer and drier however you need to keep in mind the northwest pacific there will be that pacific jet stream which i don't expect to bring that much rain as much as a la nina however it'll drop down at points where we're expecting to see more um, low pressure systems go through the northwest pacific than what you're than what you would typically be may be used to in the northwest pacific so definitely keep an eye on that and then during an end zone neutral phase we see that jet stream dip um throughout the great lakes and northeast and however you also may be asking what's expected during a la nina phase during a la nina phase we see it very similar um as you 
Um, as you might know, the neutral phase is pretty much a mix between uh, El Nino and La Nina phase because in neutral phase, the temperature stays within the one degree Celsius threshold um, um, around the average. So it should it's pretty much in the middle of a La Nina and El, a combination of an El Nino La Nina phase. So it's definitely um, so. For La Nina, it's a little bit different. However, we still see that polar jet stream dip down. However, it tends to be more wet a little bit and more towards the mid-Atlantic as well. Um, but tends to be more dry closer to the south as there isn't really a subtropical jet anymore that's going to move through the southeast. So definitely big differences between the El Nino, the uh, neutral phase and La Nina phase. And at this point, uh, um, if we take a look at at the chances of uh, El Nino, which could potentially change things, it's expected to have a very low chance of developing, pretty much lower than a 20% chance of developing. So, um, so based off of this, we could assume that this will be the general idea of how this winter will look like. I'll show you the map right now, and you can see that based off of my map, I expect a cold and very snowy winter and the worst of the winter. And what? And what I also think will contribute to a more um, intense winter for uh, much of the Northeast and uh, Midwest is the Arctic Oscillation, which keeping a track of it, um, it's very important to determine what type of winter you'll see. And you see, as of right now, we're in a positive phase. And you might be asking, what's an Arctic Oscillation? It's pretty much... Um, it's pretty much a phase that happens in the northern hemisphere where there's a negative phase and a positive phase and during a positive phase we're more likely to see um, cooler air stay um, stay um, in the northern hemisphere and what that does is that that um, makes um, temperatures a lot colder um, in the Arctic regions like Canada and the around the North Pole, Greenland and um, and usually it doesn't bring and usually during a positive phase the temperatures are higher throughout most of the u.s because during a positive phase um during a positive phase what causes a positive phase is a stronger than usual high pressure system that's located towards um, around bermuda and a stronger than usual low pressure system that's circulating around the arctic and what a stronger and um, high pressure and low pressure system do is they increase the westerly winds um, throughout the northern hemisphere and um, and that pretty much forces the cold air to move from in uh, a westerly to easterly direction rather than linger and meander um, because the, since the strong westerly winds are so strong they push they they mainly maintain that cold air um, on the north because the winds don't really the winds pretty much push it towards one direction because if it were weaker then there's more likely of a chance that that cold air would meander and maybe move south however during a negative phase we have a weaker low pressure system and a weaker high pressure system and what that does is that the westerly winds become weaker and as a result that cold air is less likely to move from a westerly to easterly direction and meander a little bit more than usual which would mean that it's there's a higher chance that we'll see that we'll see quarter temperatures meander to the south and as a result quarter winter throughout the south so um you may be thinking about looking at this um arctic oscillation index that it's good news that we're currently seeing a positive phase however as of right now since it's only the fall we're not even in winter yet we're not even close to winter yet it's um, it may be unfortunate to those who don't like snow that you that we're seeing a positive oscillation, Arctic oscillation, because what that does is that that decreases the temperature, the average temperature throughout the northern hemisphere. And when that negative phase comes, it comes really hard because because um, if there's a positive phase for a long time in the northern hemisphere during the fall months, we're more likely to see the snowpack increase. Um, in the northern portion of the earth around the arctic region and as a result more um, colder temperatures because of a higher snowpack and if we see a negative oscillation all that colder air that the positive os arctic oscillation built up will move to the south and 
the cut and bring even colder conditions and um, you also sh um, notice based off of this graph when we see a negative phase we mainly see a negative phase throughout most of the winter so the so um, what may be um, what may be hopeful for some of the, the to some of those who don't like winter is that um, if this positive phase continues on to maybe November, December, and um, maybe January, then we could see a less active winter. However, I think there's going to be a point around November and December where we'll see the negative um, Arctic oscillation come back and as a result a stronger winter and since we're seeing a positive phase now the snowpack is likely gonna increase it, um, around the Arctic and now bring even colder temperatures on our way once that negative osc Arctic oscillation comes in so as a result of all of these factors I expect a very cold and snowy winter the worst of the winter in the Northeast because like I said um, we're gonna see that subtropical jet possibly encounter that um, our, that um, polar jet that's gonna dip through the northeast, um, like um, which looks typical for a neutral season. So we're more likely to see uh, heavy snowstorms throughout the northeast. So I will prepare for a strong winter throughout the Great Lakes and northeast. And as a result, also um, we're gonna see a cooler. Um, we're gonna see a cooler. Um, um, than average temperatures throughout the Great Lakes and that might increase the chance of um, uh, of um, clippers moving through this area as a result of this polar jet dipping down and as a result more lake effect snow throughout this region so definitely keep in mind if you're along the Great Lakes as well um, and um, anywhere else along the map if we take a look um, of where while I'm forecasting I expect it to be warm and humid because that Pacific jet is going to move through the southeast and warm and dry for most of the um, southwest United States because like I said when there isn't a, an El Nino it's typically like that it's typically warmer and drier than usual and it's been warmer and drier than usual throughout um, the west coast um, especially as of recent and I expect that to continue and that may be unfortunate because that might increase the chance of wildfires especially one once those Santa Ana winds come in so um, that's definitely a worry for California but other than that I expect it to be warm and dry for this region and then cool and wet for the Northwest Pacific as a result of um, oh I'm sorry I've been I've been saying the subtropical jet was a Pacific jet my bad I meant to say subtropical jet for the south and then I expect the Pacific jet for the Northwest to move through the Northwest Pacific and that will bring a little bit more low pressure systems in those areas which is why I expect it to be a little bit more cooler and wet than usual and then throughout the Midwest I expect it to be colder and snowy as a result of this dip in the um, Atlantic jet stream and the polar jet stream um, th thanks to a more neutral winter pattern which is the most likely scenario coming into this winter so I would definitely prepare for that if you're along the Midwest and Northeast where we're going to see a colder than, um, and snowier than usual winter. And to be honest, I personally like the snow. Um, I like to see snow in my area. I live in New Jersey. So, um, so it seems like I'm ex predicting a strong winter for my region. And I think it's going to be likely to happen as a result of a neutral season combined with, uh, combined with a more likely possibility we're going to see a stronger negative arctic oscillation going into this winter but um yeah i guess that's it for this video um if you guys want even a more specific forecast for your specific region for your specific city or town then you could just ask me in the comments i'll give you a prediction of a snowfall forecast it could easily be wrong because winter it's hard to get things precise especially when it comes to weather so I'm gonna give my best prediction of um, in terms of the inches of snowfall you'll expect this winter and I thank you all guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you like this video make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to share with friends and family who are interested in this winter um, who might be skiers who might not like the winter whoever it, the whoever it may be um, just make sure to share it and I hope you guys have a good day